This episode has been brought to you by Flowstate, the unlimited Webflow development service. Find out more at flowstate.dev. I haven't been this excited about a no-code tool for quite some time, to be honest. And who'd have known it was Wix? Let's talk about Wix Studio. Briefly looking at the, the website, I think I just want to draw your attention to a couple of different things. I mean, the, the tool itself is, it looks, and we'll get into it in a second, but it looks pretty bog standard, what you've come to expect from a no-co tool nowadays. We've sort of nailed that UI interface, to be honest. But, um, so as I read down, the features seem pretty, pretty standard. They've got an AI feature, which is quite nice. And then you get to this section here, which obviously states that it's GDPR and CCPA and LGPD is data protection compliant, which is a big thing that I think Webflow have been struggling with for quite some time. For whatever reason, they don't want to do anything about that. So I think that's a big differentiator from the get go. But if we log into the tool. As I say, the, the build, the, the kind of UI here is what you've come to expect from any no code tool. Now I have my gripes about what they call docking here. They call it docking. Don't really want to get into it, but from a responsivity perspective, I think this is leading people on, let's just say. But having said that, you can build your website and it looks nice and it's very com comparable, comparable, comparable to Framer. If you're interested in Framer, you've got this idea of building your own elements here, just like you would in Framer or Webflow, but they also have their kind of pre-built sections and these are very much front and center um, for for your website so again there's nothing particularly special about this it's just another option and in my quest to get you to explore and experiment with new tools to see if it will work better for you or to give you another option in certain circumstances maybe there's a, a lower priced uh, budget option for someone's website where you don't need to go all in on Webflow, for instance, Wix Studio might be your tool. But the biggest thing that I have seen in Wix Studio, which I think was apparent in Editor X, because Wix Studio is, Editor X still exists, but I think Wix Studio is in kind of like beta testing or something like this. They had it in Editor X, but let's just ignore that for a second. It's dev mode. And I was speaking to a friend last night in fact, about, I've been doing a lot of experimentation and exploring on the current state of WordPress, the actual current state of WordPress, not this hyperbolic narrative that's portrayed in the Webflow sphere where it's just this old bulky thing. There are actually some significant advancements. I won't get into it here, but there may be a video coming on that. Regardless, what I was saying to my friend was that the biggest thing that Webflow are missing is access to backend code because ultimately WordPress gives you access to backend code and allows you to build things in a much more secure way and have things on page uh, load. R whereas Webflow leads you down a false sense of security where you get a website up and running and you can do all of this stuff, but you're doing it on the front end. For instance, FinSuite's uh, CMS sorting, okay? At page load, you've got a page that makes little to no sense. And that's what SEO spiders will read and understand about your website. And then it's through JavaScript that reordering happens. This is not good. That's not good for the web because it's, it's, it's making sense of a page after the page loads. Whereas when you have access to backend code, you can do all that sorting on the backend. And this is where dev mode comes in on Wix Studio in that not only do you have front access to front end code where you can um, target elements and do whatever you need to do? But you also have back end code, which you can see it here. I've got to now open an editor. I mean, for a start, you need to turn dev mode on. You need to turn this sort of stuff on. So it's kind of hidden, which I think Webflow can learn from that. If you want to take it, take interactions and custom code at face value, you can absolutely do that in the current state. But if you want to then dip into the back end code, having it hidden or something that you need to turn on is a really nice touch to say, look, you're entering a new world. And what I'd like to see 
is if this was to uh, exist on Webflow, that you then get access to interactions, the actual JavaScript that um, is created for interactions. And then that answers a question to a video that I did a little while ago where I'd love to be able to target or manipulate or trigger interactions with JavaScript. So it would be great if you turn this dev mode on and you, you see all of your JavaScript that, that actually powers the interaction. Oh, didn't see you there. Well, I'll take this opportunity to say, if you're enjoying the episode or finding a lot of value in it, then please consider hitting the like button. It really supports the channel. If you want to hear more about no-code tools such as Webflow, then hit the subscribe button as well as that bell notification so you don't miss a beat. Now, back on with the episode. It uses this Velo language, and I'm, I'm still trying to figure this, this Velo thing out, and I'd love to do more. Let me know if you want me to do more, um, and I'll dig into a bit of Velo. But ultimately, it's its own kind of JavaScript-esque language, which uh, works both front-end and back-end. It's a full-stack language, from what I understand. You get access to the raw databases, which you can create an external database here, or you can create an internal database. Now, again, this is a slightly more nerdy approach to the CMS. You still have C you still have collections that you can access here, but I think this drills into the underlying code, which I just think is so 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 powerful. Uh, you can you can link it to GitHub, so you can have it stored. Uh, presumably, you can have all this code stored on an external um, GitHub repo. And that's just fantastic. The other thing is NPM packages, which will just extend your website just incredibly so. Like having the ability to install NPM packages is fantastic. They have their own Velo packages and you can create your own custom apps. This whole coding ecosystem is exactly, exactly what Webflow need. Again, it's hidden behind and, un you know, you have to unlock this, but this will, I think adding something like this will completely put Webflow in this advanced coding uh, section. I said in my roundup video that this re the updates that happened at Webflow Conf really took it to the next level. This, if they added something like this, it would skyrocket them to the moon. I, I, I seriously think if, you, if you're not thinking about this Webflow, you should absolutely start thinking about this. And again, you can, you can because it's hidden, you're really maintaining your beautiful user-friendly UI, but giving the, those that want to dig a little bit deeper the ability to do so with something like this. So I'm really keen to look more into uh, editor, uh, Wix Studio. Um, I'd like to, I'm excited about it because hopefully it will encourage Webflow to consider something like this, which I'm surprised, like I say, I think this was an Editor X, so I'm surprised I haven't already thought about this sort of stuff or released some sort of uh, thing. I, I, maybe Dev Mode was, uh, sorry, I, I think maybe Dev Link was potentially part of that whole decision. Saying that, if you are looking to try Works out, I'll leave links to everything down below in the description. I'm keen to dig more into it. Let me know what you think, whether you think this is a viable um, and interesting solution that Webflow should adopt. Let me know if you want to hear more about Wix Studio or Velo or anything like that. And I'm happy to do more videos as long as it gets the demand. Like, subscribe, all the rest of it. And until next time, happy no coding.